Exile is not being played a lot right now. Let's show him some love, shall we? So, I'm playing a new Exile deck with a couple of cards from the spaces between the latest data pack and I'm up against a Tenant Institute. Well, a worthy opponent. Let's see how well my Exile deck does for its first test run. Well, a little pun there. There are a couple of test runs in my deck. Alright, um, this uh, economic backbone should come as no surprise to you. Dirty laundries, lucky fines, and shoulder gambles, and power naps, all with uh, prepaid voice pads because really, um, if you want to make a semi decent deck, you need to have one of those competitive economic backbones to support your uh, your gameplay. Some uh, some of the older methods of gaining money, such as I, prof contacts, maybe uh, uh, liberated accounts, they're just way too slow for the current meta. Now I know what you're thinking. What? David in Shaper? <laughs> yeah. Four whole influence spent on David. Is it worth it? Well, we'll see. The thing is, there's a lot of recursion in this deck. I mean, Shapers already offer a lot of recursion, and especially in Exile, recursion is highly. Uh, is. Uh, is well rewarded with card draw, which is very valuable. Card draw is one of those uh, things that are hard to come by even in within Shaper. There are only so many card draw mechanisms. So having that constant card draw is great. Now I might have made a mistake here by installing the clone chip and signal things prematurely. Those were a waste of early game clicks that could have been better spent. But well, there weren't that many other good cards to play. Look at my hand. You don't want to play Diva at this time. David, you don't really want to throw it on the table. You will know why later. Next celebrity, I'll rather wait for his uh, current to come out before I play mine. I'm not really making any runs now. Well, yeah, I can run through pub. Maybe I should have played Next celebrity at this time. But anyway, I have a test run at a quality time, so things should go well for me. Alright, he treasures my David. That's good. I can now fish it out with Clone Chip. But he also treasures my net celebrity, so that is not going to see play this game. Unless I recur it with Levi AR, that makes sense. Or same old thing. That's the good thing. In runners, uh, net, uh, the currents can be recycled with same old thing. But usually it's not worth it. Still, it's always an option to keep in mind. Alright, because his pup, pup is the only thing guarding his HQ, I'm making free runs on HQ. Um, if only to deny his tenant ability. I cannot afford to let him get uh, advancement tokens. I really let him score a 3-2 agenda, that was my mistake. Or I mean, also due to bad draw because I didn't see my main breaker. But otherwise, yes, um, I need to deny him those uh, advancement tokens. My deck isn't too fast. I mean, my deck is supposed to be able to handle the early pressure, but the problem is I didn't see my tutors. I didn't see the test run until his Philotic was scored, so that was unfortunate. On the bright side, Philotic is off the charts now, so I don't have to worry about getting flatlined by a fast advance agenda. Alright, um, I face check the Yagura. After that, uh, I go through with a successful run, which is pretty important. I need to make it, uh, keep his uh, ID ability deactivated. And here, you see me draw into my main breaker, Overmind. Yes, if you haven't noticed by now, this deck is all about um, the recurrence of limited breakers. When I say limited breakers, I mean uh, they only have a limited number of users. They You cannot keep using them like your know, standard breakers like Corroder and Cordial Blade. Overmind starts only with 3 tokens. Same with David. So once they're used up, it's time for me to scavenge them or to test run them from the heat or to clone chip them. In any case, this will net me extra cards, which I which I can thoroughly use. Alright, uh, is it time to play my Overmind? I think it is. Three tokens only, but that should be enough. I hope I can get through, and yes, um, this is the good thing. With four credits and an Overmind on the table, I can get through any ice. Because, uh, unless he has too many subroutines, but 3 subroutines is usually the max you would expect. Uh, any greater than that, 5 strength or more, I can clone chip my David and get past the ice. So, 
Yes, that's why I felt very confident running with only four through the team. And this is why Overmind and, and David is such a daily combo. Overmind takes care of the cheap ice. If it's too, if the strength is too high, you just call in the David, which will break your ice, no matter the strength, happily for one credit per sub -routine. It's a great deal. And I don't really have to worry about inefficiency with the power tokens on David and uh, Overmind because I have so much recursion between the two Divide AR Lab accessors and all the scavengers, all the clone chips. It really doesn't matter. Those These power tokens can be spent as though they are free. Alright, now I need to worry about my economy. It's not looking good. What do I do? There are a couple of one install cards that I can play and I decide to play the Esau's Pawn Shop and the Plume Chip. Okay. Yes, by now, if you haven't noticed, um, if you weren't paying attention to the screen, what happened was he celebrity gifted me a very loaded hand with a Clone Retirement, a Brain Trust, and two Caprice Nisei's. So I'm very confident that the Caprice Nisei is put on HQ right now. And if you look at my hand, I have some another janky card. Yes, Starlight Crusade Funding. <laughs> I wonder what it could be used for. Well, there are not that many doubles in my deck. Six to be exact. The three power naps and Ducky Fights. But if I can manage to chain them together, it could be the start of something good. And right now, it seems to be the time. Next turn, I'm prepared to play Starlight Crusade Funding and Double Power Nap, leaving me with one free click to do something else, rather than spending my entire turn power napping away. So yes, it's a pretty janky combo, but I think it fits perfectly in this deck, because this deck likes Aesop's Pawn Shop. Aesop's can be used to recycle dead Overmines and dead Davids. There's Scavenge, but if Say I've used up all my scavengers, or they're at the bottom of my deck and I'm just not drawing into them. I could use Aesops to get rid of Davids and Overmines that are on the board and activate my clone chips if I draw into clone chips instead of, instead of scavengers. So Aesops is actually a very good include in my deck and it gives me a lot of money while I'm at it as well. So Aesops, um, since it goes well with Starlight Crusade funding and I'm already playing doubles, so why not? I play one copy of Starlight Crusade Funding as well, and in the event that I have at least two doubles in my hand, which I do now, look at what happened. I just burst all the way to 15 credits from a pretty low credit standing, and my last free click goes to drawing up Scavenge. So, is uh, Starlight Crusade Funding awesome stuff, and don't forget, I'm getting three more credits after this because I'm going to uninstall Starlight Crusade. Fantastic. But, because I'm playing Solitaire right now, I managed to, um, he has managed to score a clone retirement in the meantime, and I'm just waiting for him to find his trick of light so that he can trick of light his brain trust out of his head. That would be pretty horrible for me. Right now, I'm still contemplating on how I should get past the bastion. Uh, that is something I've never really considered when building my deck. It is very weak to force strength ice because overmine, you still have to pay four, four credits to get past the force strength ice, and that is really annoying. Uh, heavily taxing and four strength eyes are pretty ubiquitous in this meta, so that is not a good sign for me. Still, I'm pretty low on credits now, so that's a good sign. That's definitely a healthy sign. I scavenge the overmind and I get a free card draw in the process. Now you see how Exile's ability comes into play. Alright, annoying part Komainu. I earlier on, I Aesop's one of my clone chips because I was out of money. Turns out that was a very bad decision because, well, a parasite wouldn't save me now, but at least it will get rid of the uh, very, very annoying Kumainu that is guarding HQ. So I have no choice here. I need to spend my entire overmind just to avoid getting hit by multiple net damage. I need to keep the legwork and scavenge in my hand, and thankfully I did. The net damage hit, hit the irrelevant sure gamble. <clears throat> But I failed the size struggle and Caprice remains on the board, so that's pretty annoying. Not much I can do about it. Meanwhile, I continue drawing, I get a test run. Now, remember that test run can be used on cards in archives as well. I'm thinking of test running a parasite. But, well, I decide to scavenge the overmine for the parasite onto Komainu instead, so that my next turn, the Komainu will disappear. 
So yes, you can be very flexible. This is shape up after all. Uh, flexibility is the name of the game. And the ability to turn a dead over mine into a parasite that will kill off a very annoying piece of ice. That is one of the things I love about that runner so much. You can do... There are so many options available to you. It's just whether it occurs to you at that point in time. Here's another one. Test running parasite onto zero strength ice. Boom! No more zero strength ice. That only cost me two credits because I'm using prepaid voice pad. How awesome is that? Now HQ is completely open for my pickings. Goodbye, Caprice. I hope I win the side game. I sure do. Goodbye for you. And the best thing about opening up HQ wide open, leg work is now turned on. Unfortunately, I don't think there are any agendas in there. He fast advanced everything that I saw through his celebrity gift. So let's see what I managed to fish out. Grim, Biotic Label, Jackson Howard. Uh, Jackson Howard's a bit iffy. I decide not to trash it because that's already one on the table. <clears throat> Um, yes, the Biotic Labor really scares me. Now I know that all he needs to find is the last agenda to win. Very scary. He's on 9 credits now. If he finds the last 3-2 agenda, he wins the game. So I... The only option I have right now is to lock down R&D. But how can I do so? That's my Overmind. Thankfully, I have an SMC and a second copy of Overmind in my deck that I managed to fish out. So yes, now I can get through R&D. And I better. The question is indexing or maker side? Maker side, obviously, is Jackson's out. So, in I go. Four credits, pretty expensive, leaving me down to one credit. But at least I pull out the brain trust, another Jackson Howard, and a select gift. Not much you can do about that. Okay, at least I've prevented him from winning the next turn. That is an achievement in itself, because had I not made that run, he would have won the game outright. So, of course, he protects R&D. I have every reason to suspect that that's a Grim, but I have the perfect solution for Grim. It's called David. Problem is, I have no forms of recursion left. Yes, I have used all my recursion tactics on getting the parasites to chew through his HQ wide open, but that comes at a cost. Using my recursion on parasite means I have no recursion left to use for David. And unfortunately, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, I don't have any way to get my David back. David is so important to, to deal with Grim. Another ice on HQ, that might be Grim, you never know. Um, yeah, you. the last thing you really want to do is to spend 5 credits to get past Grim with Overmind and spending 1 power token. That's not very nice. So, unfortunately, the presence of Jackson Howard on the table means it completely shuts off my indexing. I can't really be bothered to trash the Jackson because... Uh, yeah. The ice there is pretty intimidating to me. And I don't really, at this point, even though I'm using a very strong form of economy in the form of prepaid events, I can't really afford to trash Jackson's pay tree each time. That's pretty painful. Alright, so I dirty laundry just to get some money and I confirm my suspicion that that's a grim. So that takes out my entire credit pool. Thankfully, I took one credit before this. I was expecting the grim and I was right. So, medical victory. Ooh, thank goodness, thank goodness that he didn't get his grubby hands on that agenda. So now I'm on four points, slowly but surely climbing back into the game. One last click. I count my cards, realize that there are no more econ events left in my deck, so I reshuffle everything with Levi AR Lab Access. Whoa, look at that hand. Sweet stuff. Whew. Two lucky finds, two diesels. That is amazing. That's good stuff. Um, that's pretty much the best hand I can ask for, short of changing the clone chip to something else because I desperately need to see more cards. I desperately need to see a legwork or maker's eye or something like that. And I def desperately need uh, burst credits. And lucky find is uh, of the three. I mean, yes, lucky find is the best because it only costs three to play. So a uh, single ESOPs on the same old thing. Uh, later, I mean, I mean, using ESOPs on the same old thing, I got 3 credits and that was enough to start chaining my lucky finds. Alright, and in the meantime, I also refreshed my Overmind, so now it's on 3 power tokens again, I can start threatening the uh, R&D. But I need to find my multi access cards. Right now, I'm just really hoping that he doesn't find his last agenda, which he could easily do with Jackson Howard. So that's a reason to trash Jackson Howard, but I really cannot afford it at this point. So he continues icing up R&D. 
well, what can I do? Um, this game I got pretty unlucky with the prepaid voice pads. The first one came pretty late, and the others, by the time I drew the others, uh, there was no point playing them. Alright, I diesel up. I was hope really, really hoping to see either makers or legwork. I didn't see either, so uh, there was not much I could do at this point. And judging by the way he played his last turn, he was just clicking for credits. I'm assuming that he found his agenda and he's waiting to score it next turn. But it's very inequitable running HQ at this point. But do I have a choice? If he has an agenda in hand, he wins ready. So I had to make a run and guess what? Oh, my new with six cards in hand. Uh, 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 that was so painful. Pain, pain, pain. Pain train hits, and yeah, ouch. Oh man, seeing that clone chip though was pretty, was really, really painful. Well, the good news is I don't think I can be flatlined by his deck because I don't think he's running shots or snares or veto AIs, so I should be fine. I don't pull the agenda. Well, so be it. And I run one more time because that's the only thing I can do at this point. I am really out of options and I don't see the agenda, so I think that's game. It's very unfortunate that I can't pull off any form of multi access. Oh wait, no. He hasn't won the game yet, he hasn't found his agenda. Very interesting. If I were him, I would be power drawing for cards right now, but he doesn't have that many credits after raising that combine, so yeah. Now he would have to get back to speed in credits. Actually credits he doesn't need credits, what am I talking about? He trick of light trick of lighting and agenda only costs two credits. A three two agenda, it only costs two credits. So if yes, if I were him I'll be frantically digging with my Jackson Howard. Alright, so I draw it into a maker's eye. That is perfect. I need the maker's eye. So, once again, did he find the agenda? Did he? Did he? Did he top deck it? <clears throat> well, he's taking some time to think, so I guess not. So now it's time to plan my next move. What am I going to do? Of course, first thing you must always think of is that you have Esau's Pawn Shop, which means you can gain 3 credits just by pawning the Overmind that's about to exhaust itself. Lucky find gives me lots of credits. I can pull out my other overmind in my deck. So yes, running two overmines in my deck, even though I only need one out at any time, but having access to one in the heap and one in the stack is so huge. Um, so I pull out the overmine and I run R&D. Unfortunately, the maker's like went to waste because I don't have enough credits to make it all the way through. That's pretty painful. So I had to pay five credits for the first scrim and then check out thereafter. Here is where not having recursion for David really hosing is coming back to bite me. David would have made the, made the run cost 4 credits. Instead, I had to pay 14. And I didn't have 14 credits. So, ouch. Alright. Lots of dirty laundry, so I don't want to run archives because I know there's a shiku in there. So I decided to run that remote. I think it's a Jackson Howard. I hope he doesn't use it. Uh, yeah, he uses a Jackson Howard, so yeah, I know what that means. Well, I spent one credit to make him, to force him to use both Jackson Howards. I think I came out ahead in that one because he's now sh reshuffling what I assume to be uh, non agenda cards back into his deck. Because if there were agendas in archives, he would have reshuffled them earlier with the first Jackson Howard. When he reshuffles them, he has a higher chance of drawing them. If that's what he's looking for agendas, he should be re he should have reshuffled them much earlier. So, um, really needing the burst credits, I decided to dirty laundry archives. And yes, there was one shit kill there. I'll just eat it to the face, but he doesn't elect to spend any credits on it, so good for me. So now I'm on I shouldn't be on 13 credits actually, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. He wins the game. Oh well. Yeah, that's why Tenet Institute is such a fearful ID to play against. Uh, I felt that the game I was completely hold into running R&D as my only option of winning the game. 
there seemed to be no chance because he wasn't getting a scoring remote setup. He was just fast advancing everything from hand. So at, from the point where he was at match point looking, digging for the last agenda, my only route to victory was R and D. And with two grims and a bastion protecting it, for most corps that would, for most runners that would be uh, an insane uh, server to try to get past. But for me, that was one of the easiest servers I could ever ask for because I was running David. Fortunately. I wasn't able to pull the David from the graveyard, and as a result, I wasn't made able to lock down R&D for the win. That was truly uh, very regrettable because my deck could have done so well against him otherwise. I had the answers for a lot of his eyes. Parasite brings down the Zero Strength part at Yagura very well, and it also takes care of Komaino, even though I'm forced to face check the Komaino and lose all my cards as a result. Um, his high strength Brim easily countered by David. Yeah, the only real problem was Bastion. And even Bastion, that is half as problematic as Eli because Eli consumes two power tokens on Overmind instead of just one from Bastion. So, all in all, I think I could have done a better job uh, playing my deck. Uh, but otherwise, in terms of deck building, I think this is as good as it gets. When you are playing uh, the lucky find economy, you are spending a lot of influence on the, on the lucky finds and my influence is further constrained by using David and Parasite, both of which really go hand in hand. So with so little influence left over to play with, I, I have to sacrifice multi access from HQ and that really came back to hurt me as well. But there's nothing much I can do about it in terms of deck building, it's a side effect that I have to... So well, I hope you appreciate uh, this new deck, I think it works pretty well, and I think this will be the deck I'll be bringing to my next game night. It seems to be a very good use of David, Exile, and Aesop's Pawn Shop for that matter. Seems to gel together really well, I love it. What do you think? Thanks for watching, and happy netrunning.